Let's play a game. Guess this. What's a super fast in-memory store, a key value database, a message broker, and an incredible open source project? Well, not Redis, at least not anymore. On March 2024, Rowan Trollope, the CEO of Redis, has announced that Redis will transition to a source available license. And by the way, Rowan himself did not create Redis. And this is a very important detail that makes this move extremely shady. And you'll hear why in just a minute. The consequences of this move could be huge. So grab yourself a drink and maybe even some popcorn because this is wild. So here's the most important detail in this blog post. Beginning today, all future versions of Redis will be released with source available licenses. Starting with the next version, Redis will be dual licensed under Redis source available license and server side public license. Consequently, Redis will no longer be distributed under the three clause BSD license. Let's talk about open source licenses for a moment. The fact that you can see the code of some piece of software does not make it open source. This is a pretty common misunderstanding. The open source initiative has a pretty well-defined definition for what is open source. So here you can really see all generic licenses, many of them we are familiar with, like MIT, like Apache 2.0, and even the BSD3 clause license that we use by Redis until now. So there are a few criteria that make an open source license an open source license, but I think the two most noticeable ones are A, that it does not restrict selling or giving away the software, and two, the obvious one is that the source code is available for everyone to see, make changes to, and so on. And by the way, if you're planning to open source your own code or project, there is this great website called Choose a License that helps you choose the right license for your project. So check it out. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, the license of the upcoming Redis versions will follow their own license, which is source available, but not open source. But what does that mean? If we dive deeper into the Redis source available license 2.0 agreement, you can see this particular section called limitations. You may not make the functionality of the software or modified version available to third parties as a service or distribute the software or a modified version in a manner that makes the functionality of the software available to third parties. What this means basically is that you cannot take Redis or a modified version of Redis and sell it as a managed solution. This is meant to shut down competition to Redis, the company itself. If you head over to the Redis website, you're gonna see that they offer a cloud solution. That's how they make money, and they don't want others to do so without their permission. That is, of course, unless you are recognized as a Redis partner. They have a partner program. Now, let's talk about the consequences, the motivation, and why this is pretty shady. Remember when I told you that the current CEO of Redis is not the founder, which normally wouldn't be that strange, but in this case, it makes the story a little bit shady, to say the least. A little bit of history here. Redis was originally founded by Salvatore Sanfilippo in 2009. Redis started in Italy when Salvatore, nicknamed Anti-Res, built it to improve the scalability of his own startup. Redis was so good that Salvatore went ahead and open sourced it, shared it on Hacker News, and it grew to become the most popular cache layer insanely quickly. And fun fact, even GitHub and Instagram were early adopters of Redis. In 2015, a company called Redis Labs, who until then was offering a managed Redis solution on the cloud, became the sponsor of Redis, the open source software that Salvatore has created. The creator has then joined Redis Labs. Three years later, in 2018, Redis Labs has changed their Redis license for the first time. They introduced what's called the server-side public license, which only affected a small set of modules that were built by Redis Slabs, the company, and were not a part of the open source Redis solution. That announcement already back then worried many developers, and the creator of Redis made a blog post trying to calm the spirits a little bit. And that blog post was titled, Redis will remain BSD license. He then explained that, as I said earlier, the core modules of Redis will remain open source. I bet you can already see where this is going. Before we continue the story, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Did you know that 95% of my regular viewers are not even subscribed? So let's change that and let's get to 1000 subs. Okay, let's continue. Fast forward to June 2020 and Salvatore, the creator of Redis, stepped down and left the company. Now, what do we have here? Redis Labs owning Redis, which it did not create, with the original creator not being around anymore. Redis Labs then changed its name to, can you guess it? Redis. 
just like the open source technology. And then let's forward to today. Redis in its entirety is not open source anymore. Oh boy. Now, why is this potentially a huge problem? There are probably thousands of cloud platforms and self-managed Redis solutions. These now directly compete with Redis, the company. And unless they become partners of Redis, they are not allowed to offer newer version of Redis on their platforms. A few examples here are AWS. They offer Elastic Cache, which is basically a managed Redis service, and Vercel. Yes, Vercel. If you set up a key value store on Vercel, you're going to notice that it says Redis in the URL. They are using Redis as well. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you're a business using Redis and, you know, it's just a component in your architecture, you're hosting it maybe on your Kubernetes cluster, you can continue doing that and you don't need any license and nothing will change for you. You only need a license if you're going to sell Redis when you directly compete with Redis, the company. This move is going to benefit Redis, the company, in two ways. One is that competitors are going to have to remain stuck on the current open source version of Redis, while Redis company's own cloud offering is going to get the advanced features, the bug fixes, and the security patches. And this will naturally attract the big fish, the corporates, to migrate to their cloud offering. The second benefit for the Redis company here is that it's going to form partnerships, licensing or allowing other companies to offer Redis as a managed solution. Companies like Vercel, AWS, and stuff like that. So Redis is going to make a lot of money here. And mind you, Redis can choose who to partner with and who not to partner with. So what are the alternatives and what's going to happen? We have seen something extremely similar to this happening before. In May 2019, Elasticsearch transitioned from an open source license to a source available license. This was done after Amazon was taking the then open source Elasticsearch solution and then selling it on AWS. Elasticsearch then changed their license for the exact same reasons Redis is doing this today, probably. The way AWS and the community dealt with that back then is forking Elasticsearch, and that's how OpenSearch was born. OpenSearch is a fork of Elasticsearch, and it's still maintained by AWS today. So I think it's possible that we'll see something similar like that happening with Redis. We're going to see maybe one of the cloud giants forking the latest open source version of Redis, giving it a different name and making it open source, which will then permit others to make commercial use of that fork. Another interesting possibility is that we'll see the community driving this move. We actually saw this happening just last year when Terraform changed their license and then a massive community initiative started named OpenTF, now it's named OpenTofu, which is still going strong. So what do you think about all of this, folks? And what do you think the new open source fork of Redis is going to be called? If you have any name suggestions, post them down below. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Not sure if you like to see me coding or talking about these news or maybe both. So please let me know. And this way I know what kind of content to upload for you. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.